Hello my friends, this is Janet. This is Janet with a live video. It's been a while since I did this. Um, but I'm back, so I always promise to come and I'm here. So this will be quick. Uh, it's very cold here in Amarillo. And I want to do a quick video before you guys. I know some of you are sleeping and that's fine. You'll come in and watch this video live much later. But right now, I know for us, it's about 6.30. So I'm just going to do this quick video before I get busy. So I don't keep on postponing. Sometimes I keep on saying, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. So let me just do a quick video. As you can see, thank you so much for coming. Sailor Purity Morris's. Morris, Brian, and everybody else. I know 13 people just watching. I didn't expect a big crowd, Victor, but you're here, so welcome. So, anyway, the reason I'm doing this visa, I mean, this uh, video today is about visas. You know, the word visa is in my mouth because that's all I've been thinking about before I came here now. So, all of you, welcome. I see all of you. I don't want to forget everybody. Hello to everyone. So, the thing is, why do people get denied visas at the American embassy? Of course, I'm talking about the American embassy. There are so many embassies that people seek to go, and we'll be quite honest, people seek to go to the Western world. That's just the truth, okay? But in this case, we're going to talk about America because it's the most sought uh, destination in the world, in the world, not just for you where you are. It's everywhere in the world, okay? Most people want to come to America to do business, People want to come to America and become students. People want to come to America, you know, and visit and tour and see, oh, wow, what is this great America we hear about? So let's talk about America today and the visas, okay? I'm going to try and keep my phone stable, you know. I'm just holding it in my hand so I won't be here for too long. And before you came here, I posted something down here because I know most of my followers, you have B1, B2 visa. And this is one of the videos that you need to watch also. Visiting visa, tourist visa, B1, B2. Some of you have been given a visa for five years and it's a gateway to come to America. And you're wondering how best can I use this visa? Okay, so I'm going to answer that question. And before I came here, I read an article on a lawyer's website okay i'm not a lawyer i only speak from experience but i posted this article for you so when i'm done go down facebook type immigrant business directory find us you'll see all the articles i post never you just never know what i'll come maybe something will benefit you and i'll talk about it okay so anyway for those who have b1 b2 let's talk about that before i get to reasons why people get denied these visas the thing is, if you have B1, B2 visa, they say that was an immigrant visa with the intention. Your intent was purely to come and visit as a tourist or come and do business. And that's why they gave you that visa. Because they have a law saying you have to demonstrate the intent to go back home after you get a temporary visa and an immigrant visa. And B1, B2 is one of those. So if they decide to give you that visa, they believe you're coming here purely for business and you're coming here as a student. And many people have been asking me, Janet, so do I do? How can I make use of this? And I've always, I've never had a straight answer because I know when people come on that visa, they can't work, they can't get a social security, some states, they can't even drive. So it's kind of, you end up in the house, just, you know, not doing much. Okay. But I went and read because when I go to US, cis.gov which is the american website i always find information they say okay you can change this visa so i always knew there's something so today i went on our website and i read about these lawyers who wrote the article and this is what they said if you have one b1 b2 visa when you come here through you can go and you can change that visa okay you can change that visa from b1 b2 to student visa f1 but what they said the kind of course you'll be doing is probably vocational you are not going to do something for credits okay so you are not going to a university and then you sort a degree okay that's not how it works the people that change from that visa usually they are given a visa but this is information and i posted down here guys don't quote me but i read it and i've been on uscis.gov i knew actually they can change it so these lawyers just confirmed for me from the article i was reading they confirmed it for me you can actually change it you change it, but you can only do a course that is vocational without credit. 
And another important point they said is the, the burden of proof is on you. You have to prove the intent that when you left home, you had no intent of coming to school. And they said that is the most difficult thing because no one is in your head to know your intention. So you have to provide proof to the USCIS.gov for them to change your visa from B1, B2. Okay? And also it has to be current. And also it takes time to apply. I mean to get approved. Meaning you have to be current. Meaning the moment you come in and you decide to change, you have to change it immediately. Okay? So that is the three po important points. Three important points from what I picked up. Yes, you can change B1, B2 to student. Yes, but you have to do a vocational course probably with no credit. Okay? And then you have to demonstrate the intent that you had no intention of coming to America and switching from being a tourist or a business person and then going to do the student, you know, applying for student visa. Okay? Now, this was the recommendation from those lawyers. Okay? This was the recommendation. It's better you go back home or if you're already home, just get the F visa, F1 visa when you're still there, okay? And I say this because someone was telling me, they asked me that question. They say, Janet, I'll be one, be two, but I'm home. I want to come to America instead of just, you know, doing this. I want to come to America and switch. I hope I've answered your question. You're better off because they gave you the visa the first time, okay? They trust you to some extent. They trust you to some extent. So... If you come, you get a school, if you're still home, find a school, go get a community college and get that visa, okay? All right, I hope I've made sense. You can come here, take the shortcut because you already have a B1, B2, but coming here might be difficult. It might be difficult. They say it's, it's even more difficult for the USCIS.gov to switch it than you just going to your embassy back home and getting a student visa right away, okay? All right, I hope you learned something. That's all I have for B1, B2. I know many of you have been asking. Thank you so much for coming. I see Esther, team, units, all of you I see, okay? I hope I've answered some of those questions of B1, B2. Now, let's come back to the topic why people get denied. Why do people get denied these visas, okay? Obviously, I don't work in the embassy, okay? I've been through it. I've been through those doors. I've seen people denied. I've seen people cry tears. I've, I've seen people happy. They get the visas, okay? And from experience, I'll talk here from experience, having gone to these interviews with the Americans, having lived in this country for long, okay? All right, you have to apply for the correct visa. That is top on the list, okay? From what I've gathered from my research, I've come to realize that people go to the embassy and they apply for the wrong visa. And people come out, they, say, they just ask me one question. They just ask me one question. They didn't ask much. Well, if you apply for the wrong visa, my friend, you have no chance. Let me give a perfect example. And you say, okay, Janet, you're saying you think us, we are fools. We know. We know, of course, if I'm going for visiting, I'm going to Google and get B1, B2. Correct. That is true. If you Google, you're going to go look for B1, B2 and you say, okay, that's a visiting visa. If I'm coming for student, okay, I'm just going to go for F1 visa, okay? But let me give you a perfect example why I say this, okay? When I came to this country, I came on F1 visa as a student, Okay, I left, I was married at, at the time. I got married on uh, August, no, in May, and I came in August. Just three months after the honeymoon, I came to America, okay? Now, when I came here, I was pregnant. I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to raise my, my child alone? I need the father here to help me. So stupid me, looking back, okay? Listen to me. Some of you are saying obvious. It's not obvious. I wrote a letter to him. I said, okay. I'm writing you a letter inviting you to America. I even put in there that, you know, he's going to come. He's the father of the baby. The baby is American. He's going to come and help, you know, to raise the American baby. You see how naive we are? I hope I'm making sense. So he goes in the embassy, applies for F1 visa, of, not F1, visiting visa. Of course, he was denied. Okay, now knowing what I know now, knowing what I know now, okay, this is the lesson I learned. The correct visa for me to apply for my husband at the time was F2, okay? Because I was F1 student, the law allows for a spouse to come on F2. No questions asked, so long as you provide evidence, okay, that it's your spouse, you have a marriage certificate, and they are student in the United States. You go to the financial office, the financial office says, okay, she's going to add some tuition to cover the cost of the spouse, to give them housing when they come here, okay? Looking back, I should have, I didn't have to mention American baby. I didn't have to do because the law allows 
for America, if you're in America as a student on F1, you are allowed to bring your spouse. Okay, on F2. That's what I should have done, my friends. Look at me, I went asking for a visiting visa. That is reason number one why they deny. Why did they even deny? Now looking back, the law tells them that anyone asking for an immigrant visa, meaning unless you are coming as a fiancé, unless you are coming on a green card, okay, or those permanent visas, if you are asking anything else like F1 student, temporary visiting tourist, the law tells the American embassy that you have every intent of coming to America and never going back. And they have to fulfill that burden of proof. If they are audited, for example, they have to show that actually... When they looked at your paperwork, you had no intention of going home. Of, so that's why they denied you. And these visas are not appealable. Okay? So I hope you've learned something. You have a spouse here. They are a student. You go for F2. You don't go for visiting. Mentioning an American baby. Let me give you the second example. So to make sense. And I say this because I know there was a mom whose daughter is now married to an American citizen and she's gonna, the daughter is gonna get a green card and she was saying, how can I accompany my daughter and, you know, escort them to America? There is a process, okay? Even that American who married the uh, Kenyan lady, in this case it was a Kenyan lady, he had to follow the process, which can take six to nine months. There's nothing like just walking there or it's a two-day process, my friends. I hope I'm making sense. Now, let me give you that example so you know why people get denied these visas, okay? having no, Now I know what I know. You have an American, okay? Let's say I'm an American now. I'm an American citizen. I come and marry a Ugandan. Let's use an, a Ugandan, for example, okay? Now, my I come back to America and then I tell my boyfriend in Uganda, I say, okay, come and visit me. Then the, the, the letter says, an American citizen, I'm married to so-and-so, he's in Uganda, I'm going to invite him to come and visit me, okay? Then he goes to the embassy, okay? Remember, an, I'm American. The Americans have the best interest of their citizens. They are here to help me as an American citizen. They are here to protect me. Do you understand? If you show up in the embassy, now my Ugandan fiancé or husband goes to the American, to the Ugandan embassy or American embassy in Uganda and says, okay, I'm married to my wife Janet in America. She's American. On a visiting visa. Denied. 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 Why? Because the law tells them, okay, anyone coming on a temporal visa, like a visiting visa, like a tourist visa, okay? They have every intention of coming to America and never going back. It doesn't matter if you are married to an American citizen, you have an American child, that's what the law says, period, end of story. They are not going to give you priority just because you are married to an American citizen. And then you go there, man, and my husband is American. They are not going to deny me. Obviously, this is, no, the law tells them, now, in this case, in fact, this is why they are going to deny you. Obviously, this man in Uganda is married to an American citizen. If they go to America, they'll never come back. Easy. I mean, that's so obvious. Looking back, that is so obvious. That is so obvious. Anyone coming to edit the embassy, they'll be like, how can you give this man a visa when the wife is an American citizen? You know very well, he, this man will not come back. And why do they deny? Because they know there is a line. There are people doing the right thing. There are people lined up waiting for the same visa. They are married to American citizens, but they've done the correct, they've gone through the correct route, USCIS.gov. So what I should do in this case, because my husband is in Uganda, I'm going to file a fiancé visa, okay? A fiancé visa, I'm not going to file for a student visa. That way... They can come, we get married. Oh, if I, okay, if we are not married, let me backtrack. If we are not married, I'm going to file for a, a fiancé. But if we are married, I'm going to file for my, 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 my husband a green card. Yes, it will take six months. Yes, it will take nine months. But that is it. Everyone else is lining up. So why would my husband in Uganda, for example, go and take shortcuts asking for a visiting visa, which can be given in one week? And then come to America, break the law with the intent of never going back to Uganda. I hope I'm making sense, okay? So this is to tell you that the seriousness of these visas, these people don't just deny everything you show up, they are following the law. 
Okay, when you show up in the embassy, they have laws that they are following. There are things they are making decisions based on. And this information, by the way, I listened firsthand from American embassy officials. They are giving an interview to an, uh, a Nigerian, a Nigerian um, journalist. I also listened to the journalist somewhere in the uh, Philippines. They are talking to the American embassy. So this is first-hand information. This one is, I'm not even making up. Especially that example for the American that people misinterpret. They think just because you're going to say, I'm going to have an American baby. I have an American husband. My dad is American. They're going to give you priority. No. They're going to follow the law. Okay? So if you have an American relative, let them file for you a green card. Go at the back of the line like everyone else and wait. That is the whole intention. You are not going to start going there and cutting corners and saying, I'm going to go visit so we can save some time. I can't wait to see my husband in nine months. That's too long. Or in six months, that's too long. Okay? Let me go to the comment. I gave you two examples to demonstrate that even the ones who have the most connections, they get denied. Okay? Now, let me come to the common people why they get denied. First of all, obviously, you apply for the wrong visa. Number two, you are not honest. Okay? If they ask you a question, be truthful. Because if, they, if you lie today, it means you have to keep on lying. You have to keep on keeping up with the lies. Because every time you show up in the embassy, my guys, these people have technology. Everything they are putting in the computer. So the next person that comes, maybe you saw this uh, embassy official today and it was their last day in Kenya. It was their last day in Uganda. They are going back to America. They are transferring to Turkey. The next person just comes to the computer and they follow the notes of the previous person. So you can't say, okay, I can go there. Maybe I'll find a nice person. If you get denied a visa today and you go after two weeks, the next person is just going to say, okay, what is different in two weeks? What is the material change in two weeks? But if you wait for two, six months or one year, at least maybe your finances have improved or maybe you've become a student. Maybe you've gotten married. Okay, now you have financial ties. Maybe you have uh, social ties back home. And I'm not saying that you have to be married. By the way, before I continue, I realize some people, they just come here and listen to one video and they think Janet knows what she's saying. Sometimes, that's why people follow this page. It's because you overall, if you keep on watching many videos, it starts making sense. Because you can't watch one video and say she said this, but she said I have to be married to go to the embassy so that I can get a visa. That's not the point. Okay? Most students are single. Most students are young. Okay? The universities expect these people to come, international students to come. Most of them are from high school. Many of them are from high school. Some of them master. Some of them, and they are single. Okay? So, guys, you have to put one plus one together. Okay? So, all I'm saying is if you get denied, don't go back in two weeks. Like, you, you, you can go back. By the way, the law allows you to go as many times as you can. Okay? But just remember that what you told them has been typed. It has been put in the computer. So the next person that comes, the next shift, is just going to read the story and say, Okay, but ma'am, you were here the other day. What has changed? So before you go back, make sure you've made your application stronger. And by stronger, I mean, if they asked some questions last time that you messed up, now you are more prepared. Another thing is confidence. Confidence. That's a big one. I, can, I, can, I can't emphasize this enough. This is best from living here in America. I was like that too. Most of us, okay, most of us, and in a good way, we are timid. Being timid is a good thing at home. Being polite and just quiet and timid is a good thing. But here, unfortunately, if you look like that, people might think you don't know. If they ask you a question, and by the way, if I tell you, just answer the question. Just be direct. Don't volunteer information they didn't ask. So you go to the embassy and line up. They ask you one question. You say, well, but Janet, say, just answer one question. Just answer. You don't just answer and keep quiet. And then they're like, okay, so what is this person? Don't make it boring. You know, just it, <laughs> relax. Okay, make it personalize the experience. Personalize the experience. What I'm saying is, do not volunteer important information unless they ask. But it doesn't mean you just stand there and wait. Remember, another thing why they get denied is if they sense you are not a good student. Because they have a responsibility to these universities and community college to admit students that will have the ability to pass exams. If you go there, okay, you are speaking in low tones, you are whispering. He can't even hear you. Yes, 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 yes. yes. 
Yes. Yeah. To them, however smart you are, they are thinking you are not a good student. Okay? They, by the way, first impressions, my friends. People, we all judge. Well, we all judge. We know that we make judgments. All of us, we judge. So give yourself a best chance. Be confident. Be loud enough. Okay? Smile. Put on a bright face. So that people can understand what you're saying. Like really you are going for a master's program. You are going for a bachelor's degree. You are going to this community college. Show your abilities by talking clearly. Be articulate. Be confident. Don't look desperate. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Make that person feel like. Huh. This is going to be a good student. Just remember in America. Confidence is a big thing. Being timid my friends doesn't help. People might like you and say. Oh she's quiet. But when it comes to demonstrating your abilities, people that are confident, they have a better chance. People that show a smile, you know, people just trust you more. Unfortunately, so I'm just telling you, don't go stand on the line and say, well, Janet said we just volunteer one or two questions. Don't, no, don't misinterpret. Watch all my videos, my friends. Watch all my videos. Put these stories together. Don't just watch one and then you go away. That is another reason why people get denied. Being timid. Not being very clear, okay? Don't, you know, you have to be very clear in your speech and what you're saying, okay? All right, the piano teacher says she's ready. So people panic. Don't panic, my friends, okay? Don't panic. All right, confidence, okay? If you don't say the truth, that means you have to keep on lying every time, okay? All right, don't take shortcuts. Don't, sh okay. Another thing before I go real quick, maintain eye contact. In America, eye contact means honesty, you are honest. When you are looking someone in the eye, they trust you. If you are not looking in the eye, they feel like you're lying. Okay? Just know that. That's how they look at it. If you don't maintain eye contact, they feel like you're lying. You can't change that. It's just cultural. It's just like you're going to visit your dad or your grandfather. You have no respect. You have your heart back home. You have everything looking the other way around. They say, Even if you have respect, people are just going to judge you. Okay? So maintain eye contact. Okay? Smile. Another thing, you can't cross your hands. To them, crossing hands means close communication. I'm done with you. I'm not going to talk. But most of the time, the windows are high enough. They'll not be able to see your hands, okay? So, my friends, I hope I've helped you for my people. Thank you, Liz, for coming. Thank you, Morgan, okay? Everyone else, thank you so much for coming. For those who've been asking B1, B2, I've posted an article on this page, Immigrant Business Directory on Facebook. My website, immigrantbusinessdirectory.com. I'm going to start writing very good articles for you guys. When you go there, you can enjoy, okay? YouTube, my name is Janet Rangi, okay? All right, so that's how you get me my email, Janet at immigrantbusinessdirectory.com. My book is out. I'm testing it. It's going on Amazon soon. I'm going to advertise in India, China, Kenya, Uganda, Turkey, everywhere. Any immigrant that wants to come to America, the book will be helpful. I hope you'll be the first person to get the copy, okay? I love you so much. B1, B2, watch this video again. Read the article, okay? B1, B2, I've answered your question. If you go to the embassy, we have to deal with this big elephant in the room, my friends. We can do everything. Janet can give you all the conferences, can expose it to all the scholarships, tell you about F1 visa, tell you about F2 visa, J1 visa, exchange programs, visiting everything, my friends. Green cards. Green card, well, almost guaranteed, okay? But if you can't cross the embassy, the visa is the one that will determine your gateway to America, okay? Those who've been denied and they come to tell Janet, we go to plan B. Thank you so much for coming. Some of you will be denied. Don't give up. You come. We talk about it. For those who've been getting, congratulations, okay? So, anyway, it's getting dark. I have to go. The piano teacher is waiting for me. I just saw her message. I wish I could go longer. I see most of you are still waiting. Okay, Fred, Grace, I love you so much. Everybody that keeps on watching me, I'll not let you down. I'm here. I'm your informant. I'll keep on bringing information to you. Remember to keep the dream alive and have a strong desire to succeed. The desire will push you over the edge. The desire will pull you out of the crowd. You will be the best. You stand, you fall, you stand, you fall. You never give up, my friends, because you are the best. Okay, go do your research. When I open my mouth, is my intent is to leave you better than I found you. These are my opinions. I'm not a lawyer, but my advice I helped has helped many people so far. This is first-hand information. You'll not find any website telling you this. This is Janet. I love you so much. Janet Rangi, my book is coming out. I'm so excited, my friends. I can't wait to be a millionaire. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time and bye-bye. See ya.